Hi everybody, thank you for tuning in again. This is a channel mainly dedicated to eating disorder recovery topics, but uh, if you know me and you've been following some of my videos, you will have noticed that I tend to pack in a lot of information that uh, perhaps to some may appear somewhat off, so some somehow uh, very far-fetched from the general discourse around eating disorders, but um, the the longer I continue thinking about themes and topics that I would still like to uh, explore in relation to my former eating disorder, which was anorexia, the more I see how, or the more I, I um, get confirmations from literature and from interviews and from eyewitness accounts um, across the board, across uh, nationalities, across uh, generations, that um, the notion of an eating disorder isn't just specific to one kind of person and I feel that uh, on, on the one hand it might be uh, naive and silly of me to be saying it as if this were a revelation because um, I've I already talked about how recent research is showing that for instance uh, children of um, of uh, as young as eight years old are showing according to statistics um, very worrying signs of early onsets of eating disorder behavior. So that uh, hypothesis that an anorexia, bulimia, orthorexia, and other eating disorder behavioral patterns manifest in uh, in adolescence is also now being contested, um, thanks to extensive research being done in the field. But there's other uh, there's other statistics that um, that that prove wrong what once was uh, believed, namely that, especially anorexia, but also uh, bulimia, are illnesses of, uh, of princesses and are, um, are strictly tied to the phenomenon of the golden cage. So uh, uh, especially a young girl, a white privileged woman who um, grows up in a well-to-do household and has everything that she needs, um, or if she's a princess literally uh, living at court and has all that her heart would um, to an ignorant onlooker probably desire, uh, is not spared of an eating disorder, is not necessarily spared of an eating disorder. And um, what I, I, according to many, until today, clinical psychiatrists, um, one of the seminal texts that really helps anybody both sufferers, but also anyone who might be interested in the subject of eating disorders in general, the, the book that continues to be recommended is a seminal text on um, on eating disorders and why they might develop. Uh, and it, 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 it comes from the German, um, Der, Der Goldene Käfig, so the same translation, The, the Golden Cage, which is a, which is a hypothesis um, that uh, Hilde Bruch, who was a German um, psychiatrist and, and then uh, had emigrated to the United States, had really worked on, and it remains uh, a fundamental text for many reasons. Um, and, and perhaps that can be considered, given her own background as, um, as a German woman, as somebody who, well, who fits the stereotype of white and privileged, um, that the clients that she would have had at her disposal, the people that she would have uh, been able to study most were specifically of that privileged white environment, but with uh, with time and with uh, with globalization, and well with the internet and the the sharing of information, it has been possible to discern very similar patterns um, of uh, of disorders um, across across social um, different social classes, and so this idea of the golden cage as Hildebruch applies it um, is especially for, for as far as I'm concerned I, I can recognize myself in a lot of her hypotheses but it's not um, it's not the only way of looking at the development of an eating disorder. I wanted to make this video simply to introduce uh, what I was hoping to do over the next couple of weeks. I, I may have mentioned it in one of my other videos but um, especially now that there is so much uh, so much news and it's, it, I find it very um, still difficult to process and I'm trying to prioritize what article to read when 
um, who's, who, which activist to follow. Um, if you are new here, then, um, then just for you to know, I've, I've recovered from anorexia, from an eating disorder, and I've been weight, uh, weight restored since over a year now. Uh, but it's taken me quite a while and it's taken me all my energies really in the last one and a half years to uh, get my own life um, halfway on track and I've been able to do that by listening to and uh, following a couple of activists. I've, I've uh, mentioned Mia Finley on a couple of occasions from the YouTube channel What Mia Did Next and um, and so I've, I've, I've been waylaying the kind of activism that uh, I, I feel resonates with me very much, but I didn't feel, or I still am sort of careful putting myself out there because I still feel there's a couple of things that I have to um, get straight for as far as uh, my own life is concerned and my own issues are concerned. And that's not to say that, uh, because I don't think that it's always possible to figure everything out and that that should be an excuse never to speak up. Um, but uh, there's a couple of points that I still want to elaborate for myself and to understand myself before I start talking about them publicly. But that doesn't change that um, the, the idea that I have, um, as far as goes, the golden cage uh, phenomenon in relation to eating disorders uh, isn't constantly on my mind when it comes to um, questions around less privileged communities and eating disorders. And I, I was very, just very, very recently, Mia Finlay did uh, a podcast with um, an activist, a, a black woman called Nia, um, whom I'll, I'll link you that podcast down below. I found it incredibly helpful, in, incredibly inspiring. For one, because I'm, I'm not surprised any longer, Mia Finlay herself, who's from Australia, and she fits the category of, uh, like me, um, I dare to speak uh, for her in that sense, but um, she, she stresses the point over and over again herself. She comes from a privileged background. She's blonde, she's white. Um, she, uh, she seems, or she seemed to fit the, the picture of uh, an unhappy, privileged white woman with an eating disorder, uh, ideally. Um, and so within that context of eating disorder representation, um, for me, but again, I speak more for myself, it tends to, uh, I, I believe it tends to be easier to associate eating disorders with, uh, with people like myself because uh, there seems to be a general understanding of uh, anorexia um, as a development of uh, a lack of affection, uh, a lack of, well, a lack of meeting the needs of a highly sensitive person. I've talked about my own high sensitivity. So I seem to tick the boxes um, when it comes to a more general awareness of eating disorders. But I just wonder when it comes to less privileged communities, when it comes to, um, I won't even start thinking of, well, I, I, I have started thinking, but I, I don't think I'm yet equipped to talk about that at all. But mental illnesses that arise from trauma because of uh, having to become a refugee or because uh, continuous discrimination against one's skin color or uh, one's religion. So all, all these kinds of environmental stresses that uh, people can be subject to, which I luckily am not, um, to me make it very obvious that somebody who isn't privileged will have an even more difficult time uh, seeking help because, because there's, a bar there, there's an additional barrier. Uh, we, anybody who, who suffers a mental illness, or rather there seems to be a trend, anybody um, who, who suffers an eating disorder and is able to talk about that in public um, has had to first transcend a fundamental barrier and that is the one of shame. The ability to talk about your issues um, comes with an ability of uh, of putting aside one's pride and, and accepting embarrassing and awkward moments um, and taking into account that the collective mind won't understand what you as an individual, as an individual suffering or a, a former sufferer of uh, an eating disorder would actually feel and so there's that constant risk 
but I feel that if you're white and privileged, you are, um, well, you're inevitably more equipped to deal with those environmental stresses. Uh, also because in terms of how uh, clinical psychology and, and, and also psychiatry and the whole media discourse around eating disorders has shaped people's perceptions of this condition, um, seems to really be tailor-made to white privileged uh, young women. Slowly but surely, um, it is being also on a collective level, and with collective level, I mean not just in the clinical um, medical context, being considered that men can also suffer from eating disorders, that men are also sensitive, so that is already a big uh, step forward, um, that uh, society is opening up to, well, to questioning, to questioning its preconceptions of uh, of en uh, well of mental illnesses in general that's a that's a great leap forward but there still seems to be a, a huge extra barrier additional barrier to look at mental illnesses in relation to uh, to communities that are underprivileged uh, because the label i talk often about eating disorders or mental mental illnesses in general as a label that once you have it uh tends to stigmatize you, tends to define you so much that all your other values, all your other characteristics tend to uh, be invisible. Whereas when it comes to somebody, especially if they have um, a dark skin color, then that is the first label. So that although they might have a mental condition, that's not what is being seen. The worst thing about this is that's, that it sometimes doesn't even uh, strike the mind even of medical professionals that that a colored person might feel the same way might have the same root causes of developing a mental illness or for that matter an eating disorder as a white privileged person the the the, the, the problem of these misconceptions still seems to persist and I was very thankful for Mia and uh, so Mia Finlay and her guest Nia who did that podcast together to talk about it also because of the the striking image that you get the, the split screen of the podcast where you have a black person talking about fat phobia and Mia who is a white blonde person from Australia um, mentioning that she suffered from anorexia so you have two seemingly entirely opposite uh, people on the same screen but they are they are collaborating in an act of convergence in an act that is meant to show the world that it doesn't matter what you look like the underlying root causes of a mental illness can be the same the environmental stress factors can be um can we e equally bad for both sides and that when you talk of the human condition, it really doesn't matter what the shell looks like. It really doesn't matter what the labels are like. It's, it's, it's about how you feel inside and how it's, it's, it's paramount to listen to people once they were able, once they are able to set aside all the shame that they might have um, constructed around their awareness of having uh, a, a mental illness and, and give them an ear and uh, and open one's eyes to a whole variety of stories that are being shared so that you get that anybody gets a multifaceted uh, view on things i'm now talking specifically about mental illnesses and specifically eating disorders but it really should count for everything in order to form one's own opinion it's necessary to listen and get information from different sources in order to be able to well an informed to create an informed judgment um but if let's say an eating disorder like anorexia is only ever being represented via the body through the eyes uh through the lens through the mouth of a white privileged person like myself then it's not surprising that to the collective mind this specific condition um, goes continues to support this golden cage phenomenon that um, that that um, German psychiatrist Hilde Bruch had so uh, wonderfully described, and that was important. I'm not I'm not saying that that, as I said very early on in my video, it's it's a seminal text. It's been uh, 
incredibly useful uh, for myself and it's been incredibly useful to many other girls, especially um, especially in the westernized uh, world, especially um, because the work was, uh, was of a woman whose main language was German um, in a post-war society where Germany and Austria, which happens to be, Austria happens to be my, my home country, um, were well were stigmatized as as nations post World War II. Um, it, it it makes sense that the environmental stresses that somebody anyone from these countries could have been exposed to simply because uh, of a more general uh, understanding of uh, whoever was German or whoever was Austrian was a national socialist that that could create um, a stigma targeted at people that really didn't have anything to do with national socialism. So I've talked about stereotypes in my videos um, on, on quite a few occasions and I and I find that somebody um, like Hilde Bruch who was German and then who had to emigrate to the United States in order to really carry through her research in, in, um, in the psychiatric field related to eating disorders, uh, I find that I find that incredibly interesting because as I try to look at my own development of anorexia, I see a lot of, much of the components that Hilde Bruch tends to tackle, I see reflected in my own life. Um, and, and, and mainly the environmental stresses that I, I won't say blame, but I see were in part uh, nurturing the development of my eating disorder are the kinds of environmental stresses that maybe the, uh, the more general Hildebruch uh, patient uh, would have would have been exposed to, but that's not to take away that environmental stresses can take all different kinds of um, uh, can 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 take all different kinds of forms, and that uh, the human condition again um, can manifest its strengths and weaknesses and and its its failings depending always on a very individual situation and in treating any illness as if it were purely the manifestation of uh, a social product, um, a racial product, is very complicated um, because it isn't it isn't fully true. So Hilde Bos thought of, and, and the theory of the golden cage is something that might work for me, but uh, when it comes to uh, eating disorder development, but that shouldn't exclude that there might be um, a theory that is exactly the opposite of the golden cage when it comes to um, communities that are black or Hispanic in the United States or that are Eastern European, uh, living in a more western part of Europe. I hope I hope I'm making myself clear. So it always is a much more individual um, what what is necessary is a much more individual way of looking at eating disorders and I realize that that can be very complicated because as I've been saying in some of my issue uh, my my videos the root causes of an eating disorder can be so varied although there are different trends and parallels and there's various forums um some of uh, some of them are, are very known to me. I've been posting um, and exchanging information on on the forum that uh, Mia from what Mia did next had set up. Um, and so, although there is there is discussion in this field, it seems to be a discussion that is tied to the sufferers themselves, rather than having reached um, the the necessary the, rather than having sorry necessarily. Uh, reached what what um, what has to at some point happen in order for there to be an understanding of eating disorders as something that can that can hit anyone. I've already talked about uh, anorexia as a, a variation on a theme. Um, so going back to the thought of root causes, or let's say going back to the idea specifically of um, the golden cage. So allegedly growing up with everything that you have, uh, the, sorry, the, everything that you need, but still not um, getting everything that uh, your heart perhaps desires, um, whether that's love or attention or uh, success at work, 
that might be a reason for developing an eating disorder, but it might be the same uh, root cause that will lead to addiction, um, whether that's drug abuse or it's, uh, well, any other kind of uh, substance abuse. Um, so why shouldn't there also be a different root cause than the golden cage, right? Um, there's uh, drug abuse. We seem to see, understand that drug abuse and alcoholism is an issue in, in inverted commas of the less privileged within the global uh, community, that drug trade in particular is something that um, that is the business of, of poor people that are selling drugs in order to be able to pay their rent. But actually it's not, it, it's, it's everybody's business. Um, there, there are statistics that may be point to drugs being sold by specific people, but at the same time, there's white privileged people that also deal with drugs. So it's a bit similar to what I'm trying to express when it comes to um, the root causes of eating disorders and also um, the root causes and the symptoms. So if the golden cage, sorry, if the golden cage can be um, the root cause for anorexia, um, that doesn't mean that it cannot also be the root cause for depression or for drug abuse. And similarly, if, uh, if you, are underprivileged, then why should you only develop uh, an addiction to drugs and not an addiction to any other self-destructive mechanism like an eating disorder? So I think by, by outlining this, these po different possibilities, um, so starting from a root cause and heading towards specific symptoms or um, looking at it from the other way, manifesting specific symptoms but being unable to trace them back to that golden cage phenomenon and having to uh, look at other kinds of environmental stresses um, so poverty in general uh, if, if if you're a child and you you especially if you're uh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking like this because I think I've mentioned in a couple of my videos I've been exposed to refugee families ever since I was a child because my Montenegrin grandmother used to work um, uh, for the International Rescue Committee during the wars in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina and I, I've always been, always, as a child in particular when I used to visit my grandmother I used to be exposed to families that had to leave their hometown and, and back then I, I realized I wasn't able to really understand what, uh, what it was that that made my life so different, the life of children that uh, weren't able to, um, the life of children that weren't able to live the same way, that weren't able to attend school at the age of four and five. Um, and so with time, of course, I did learn that the, the fundamental event that w made their life so different to mine was, uh, was war. And, and so I once, I, once I started to look at the notion of the golden cage and the lack thereof and the once I started to see that there are people that left their hometowns and have also developed eating disorders to give you that example that's when I really understood that mental illnesses can hit anybody no matter how privileged they are and so I just wanted to make this video also to announce that I will be looking at as I said earlier a couple of specific biographies that are that are not, um, that, that represent that vast spectrum. So uh, just to give you a taste of what is uh, to come in, in the next couple of weeks, I wanted to do a video on um, the, well, I'll try and do my best, but I'm not an expert on the life of Amy Winehouse and, and also Whitney Houston, as well as uh, Karen Carpenter. Um, so sort of covering that notion of the uh, rock star phenomenon succumbing to abuse and self-destruction. But I also want to, um, on the other end of the spectrum, speak of uh, the Empress, the former Empress of Austria. And I don't think that will make me very popular in my hometown um, or amongst tourists for that matter, because Elizabeth of Austria, Sisi, was... Um, anorexic as well so I'm, I'm trying I'm going to try and cover that social um, spectrum from from an empress really to a, a, a black afro-american uh, singer to to emphasize and to I hope uh, I will be able to um, make clear how eating disorders and any other forms of disorders can hit uh, anyone so that's uh, the announcement for what is to come but I hope I've been able to introduce
the way that I look at eating disorders um, in general as, as um, well as the manifestation of the human condition that can um, that can show in in everyone whether they're male female black uh, hispanic white privileged um of whatever social class and by now tragically um no matter apparently of what age so i hope that's something that you'll be interested in and um i hope that the next videos will prove not just inspirational but also educational thank you for listening and bye for now